Hey everybody, my name is Timothy Karambat, founder of Mintplex Labs and creator of Anything LLM, here to actually bring you another tool that is definitely going to change the way that you use vector databases for whatever you might use them for. So let me start this off by saying, I have one question for you. Can you tell me exactly what is in your vector database? I very much guarantee that you can't. You see, when we use tools like Langchain or when we interface directly with vector databases like Pinecone or Chroma, we don't actually really get a clear picture of the data that is actually in vector databases. That is why we created Vector Admin, which is basically a universal GUI that allows you to manage your vector data like you would with any other database. This includes permissioning, being able to export an entire database, migrate it from Pinecone to Chroma or vice versa, copy a document from one namespace to another without having to pay to re-embed it, just simple quality of life things. And that's just the beginning. We just released this today and we've been working on it for a while now and I'm happy to showcase it to you because it is going to change the way that you use vector databases. Let's start off with Chroma, a crowd favorite open source vector database. Now, Chroma, like every other vector database out there, don't really have a UI for you to manage and update and keep track of your embeddings because like all of these companies, they're trying to build a production ready, scalable vector database. They're focusing on infrastructure. We are focusing on application. Hopefully you can use these two things together. For example, I'm on Pinecone right now in my account, and all I know for sure is that I have 14 vectors in this database. I don't know what they look like. I don't know what they say in them. I don't even know what document they may have come from. I just know that I did at some point embed 14 vectors worth of information. And that's pretty much all I know. There's a workspace, that's good to know, or a namespace as, uh, Pinecone likes to call them, but trying to use this, I mean, this is just not an ergonomic way of managing my data. That is what Vector Admin solves. In the first part of this video, I'm going to show you how Vector Admin works from the very beginning, and we're going to connect to a Pinecone instance and sync it with that data that is already existing in Pinecone that Vector Admin has no idea about, but we're going to pull it in and be able to manage it from there, maybe even clone it. And then the second part of this video, we'll do the same with a Chroma instance. Also, just to be clear, Vector Admin can run locally, but it also can run on the cloud. You can run this on AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, whatever you want. It is open source, so you can use it to however you need it. In this instance, I'm using Docker, and so I'm running this locally, but I could just as easily have this on AWS. It doesn't matter. It all works the same. So the first time you boot up Vector Admin, you're going to be brought to a login screen. Now, there is a default root level login that you can use to sign in. Once you sign in with that email, it never is used ever again and you can't use it ever again. And so it just basically becomes useless. So let's sign in with the default email and password and then also just do the onboarding to take you through the process. So the default email is root at vectoradmin.com and the password is password. Now this is where it's asking me to create my system administrator account. For this, I'm gonna do tim at mintplex.xyz and my password will be password. I'm locally hosted, so it's not a big deal. I can also change this from the dashboard. So let's create the system admin. Now, everything in vector admin is set up by organizations. Now you can have an organization with the same name, it's just what we call them, but we could, for example, in one organization be connected to a Pinecone instance and in, the, in a totally different organization be connected to Chroma. You can also connect to multiple types of the same database if you wanna do that. Really the world's your oyster. But first, let's just make an organization and we'll call it Mintplex Labs and then we'll continue onboarding. Next thing is because I'm the administrator, do I want to allow people to just land on my instance and create an account? I'm locally hosted, so it doesn't matter. Um, but if I did, I could turn that on. I could also restrict signups to emails of certain domains if I wanted to, but I'm gonna leave that empty as well. When you first log in, you will see a page that looks pretty much just like this. And you'll notice that the vector database connection is red because we haven't filled anything out yet. And we also can't even create workspaces, which is what Pinecone calls namespaces or Chroma calls collections, uh, either way, just workspaces is what we're calling them. 
We can't add documents. We can't really do anything. We need to fill out some keys. It's very simple. Let's go fill out the keys. So first we're going to connect to the database and I'm going to connect to Pinecone first. So connect database. We're going to choose Pinecone. Now you just need a couple things from Pinecone and you can get them from your console. We need environment. Uh, we need the name of the index. And then we also need our Pinecone API key, which if you go to API keys, click copy key value and paste that in. You'll see that we were connected to our, the connection was made with our organization. And on refresh, you'll see that there is a sync Pinecone data. This button indicates that there is data in Pinecone that this thing can find that it doesn't know about. So let's just execute that really quickly. And what's going to happen is in the background, we're actually running a process. If you have 100,000 embeddings, it'll take a little bit of time. I have 14 in my Pinecone instance, so it should be pretty instant. But we can go and check the progress on any jobs that get executed. And you can see the data that it was sent with, as well as the result. And so look at that. On our sidebar, we have a new workspace now. Let's go to the organization level. I have two documents. I, where did those even come from? Documents originally were inserted into the Pinecone database actually using Langchain. And also one of them was inserted through a custom implementation that does the same metadata result anyway. If you're using Langchain, this tool will automatically work with all of your data. That's it. It just that it's that simple. If you have a Pinecone instance, it will work. There's a couple of things we can do though that you can't do anywhere else. The first is let's just add a document directly into my Pinecone instance. In order for us to embed a document, we need to have an embedding service. Now, our Pinecone index is prepared for OpenAI, so all we'd have to do here is paste in our key and click Save. So I'm going to do that and come back after. And now we should be able to upload a document. You'll see the first question it asked me is, where are these documents going? I only have one name, workspace, so we're going to send it there. And now I can just drag and drop any kind of item that I want. And I'm going to actually just throw in this project's readme, or this is anything LLM's readme. Okay. And you'll see that our readme got uploaded, embedded, and processed all in one. And the way that I can showcase that is we just refresh the page and there are now three documents in the anything LLM workspace, the one that already existed on Pinecone. Keep in mind, remember there were only 14 vectors in this. There are now 19. So it did add information. Now let's actually just go into the workspace itself. So this workspace is the same thing as the Pinecone namespace. And let's say you add data into just this workspace. You can sync just this workspace, just the same way we just synced our entire database. And here are some really cool features actually that can exist. So a couple things off the bat is you can clone entire namespaces. Yes. That means if you want to have a dev namespace that maybe stays in sync with some other namespace that you have on Pinecone or collection on Chroma, all you do is just click clone and you'll see that a background job gets executed, but you can see that it executed extremely quickly. We now have two workspaces. And if we go to Pinecone, we have 38 vectors, which makes perfect sense. I didn't pay to re-embed any of that information. When you use vector admin, it actually caches your vectors for you. So you don't have to pay to re-embed. That's how it works. Really neat. All that data stays on your instance and does not leave it. The next thing that is cool to outline is cloning documents between workspaces. We can clone a document and send it to another workspace. If you just want to share a single document that's embedded elsewhere into another workspace, you can go ahead and do that. One of the coolest features that I think is very, very useful is actually being able to see what's in the vector database. So from here, you can clone the document as you could before. You could delete it and all of its associated vector IDs, but you can also see the text chunk that got embedded. And you would see that this is actually a, a markdown document of just like some thoughts that I was outlining. So it's kind of messy, um, but a structured document would perform well here. But let's just say, um, I don't know, let's edit it. Yeah. So you can actually go and atomically update the text that is in an embedding. Let's just say that maybe the chunk got, you know, parsed or got split at a weird area in the document. And maybe that chunk doesn't actually have a lot of context or it's split in the middle of an important paragraph. You can just go and paste that in and embed it and it will automatically sync with your vector database and it won't affect the original document. It'll only affect the one that you're working on. So if you have 
one document copied across five namespaces, a, you can just edit a single vector. If you have a vector that you want to update in a single workspace, you can do so without impacting any of the other workspaces who also have those embeddings or used to have those embeddings. You can also go and delete atomically a single vector. Let's just say there's a snippet or I don't know, just a, a page of a PDF has like three words on it that isn't useful. No need to store it, just delete it. And also, of course, you can delete namespaces that you don't need or workspaces that you don't need. So we'll just go ahead and delete this. And if we go into Pinecone, we see we just went from 38 to 19 vectors. So we got rid of those extra vectors that we didn't need. And then last but not least, just some other features that are nice quality of life things is user management. You can add new users, add them to organizations, edit them, you know, everything that you would expect. And also you can edit those system settings that we saw during onboarding from the very beginning. And obviously the ability to view all of the background jobs that have been executed or are pending or anything like that. So you can see the end result and see what's going on. What are all the things that are happening in the background of vector admin? Hopefully this demo gives you an idea of how powerful Vector Admin is. You can install this for your organization, connect it to as many vector databases as you want. And if you are using these for document retrieval, vector databases for document retrieval, Vector Admin is a must have tool. Now for the second part of this video, let's do the same thing with a Chroma instance because just to show that it works. As I said before, you can have an organization with different database connections on it. So let's create a new organization. One thing to note, organizations can't be deleted, but we're just going to call this Chroma org and we're going to create an organization. Now I have a whole new space that I have to work in. So the first thing I need to do is get my Chroma instance running locally. Um, I could also run it remotely if I wanted to. It works the same. Uh, but to do that, I already have one booted up. So let's just go and click play on Docker. And this will boot up my Chroma instance running locally. So one way to prove that Chroma is actually working locally if you've never used Chroma before is it usually runs on port 8000 and you can usually go to API v1 heartbeat. So we know our Chroma instance is running. Now, because I'm communicating between Docker containers, the setup's going to be a bit different for me. But if this Chroma instance was on a server somewhere, it would all function the same. So what you'll do is you'll use the host Docker internal. That's not really relevant to this tutorial. Um, and this instance is not gated by an API key. We just go to connect instance and we should be good. Now you'll notice that once I connected, there is no sync Chroma data button. The reason for that is that vector admin has determined that there is actually no vectors to be found in Chroma. So you're just starting with a clean slate. So let's do that. Let's just create a new workspace. And we'll just call this sample workspace. So we have this new workspace called sample workspace. Let's just jump into it. There's nothing in here, but let's add a document. We're going to add that same readme from before. Okay. And so the readme was uploaded. And if we refresh, we see that there is now a document in this workspace. Let's showcase how cloning works. This works the same for Pinecone as it does for Chroma or any other future supported database. So let's go to our Chroma org. And we're going to create a new one and we'll call this copied workspace. This workspace is empty. There's nothing in here. But if we wanted to just save some money and some time, I know I want this document in my new workspace. So let's just clone it. And you'll see that the clone document is done. And if I go to copied workspace, it's there. And if you wanted to validate this through the Chroma API, it would show you the exact same thing. If we go up to the org level, there were five vectors per document. So there are 10 vectors total in our database. And that is pretty much it. And if we wanted to, we can go and delete documents as we want. We can also always jump in and see the specific document and how it got split and all of the information about it. And the best part is that this tool will have no impact on what your current integration is with Chroma or Pinecone. It'll just work. And of course, if we're done with this information, we can just delete the workspace which will also delete it from Chroma. And we'll just do that here. And now we are back to a fresh wiped Chroma database with no vectors in it. And that's it. And of course, you get all of the same controls as you do before, and it all just works. And this makes your life a lot easier. And so that's it for the demonstration of Vector Admin. Hopefully, this makes vector data much easier to manage and also just conceptualize as a developer or a business owner who's using 
language learning models with long-term memory for document retrieval or whatever you like. This project is 100% open source, MIT licensed, and you can find it on github.com slash mintplex labs slash vector admin. I'm gonna put the link in the description. Thank you, and if you're on the repo, why don't you give us a star while you're here? Celebrate our hard work, and hopefully we'll see you as a contributor. Thank you.